All right, let's kick it off. So today we're going to be going over um, some more of the NAR buyer broker stuff, and we're going to be focusing more on the scripts and the dialogues today. Um, what we've been doing over the past few weeks is really just learning the information, right? So it's one thing to learn the information, attend the class, watch a training video, understand what's going on, but it's a different skill set to be able to explain it and talk about it. Right. So part of today's exercise, I'm going to kind of be going some through some of these talking points and I'm going to give you maybe what I would say or some of my suggestions. And then we're going to break up into groups um, and practice them a bit. And then what I, if we have some time, what I want to do is kind of do like a hot seat where you call on someone. Right. So like I'll call on Mark and I'll say, hey, Mark, break it down on this one. Right. On this particular point, he needs to just give it, you know, how he would say it. And then Mark gets to call on somebody else and pick somebody else to say a different point, right? Because when you talk to clients, you don't know exactly where the conversation is going to go. Like you maybe have it in your mind of like, hey, it's going to go in this order. But then they like, they skip to the end and they ask you like, hey, how much do you charge in commission when you're barely on the beginning of your listing presentation, right? Like it doesn't always go in sync. So um, you need to be able to like know the information and know how to spit it off the top of your head uh, in those scenarios. Now. I'm gonna pull up this document here that I you guys all have a copy of. Feel free to write on this document as well, right? Like if you wanna just take some notes or if you have anything else you're taking notes on, you wanna scribble some points. But if you look at what I wrote here on the keys to success on the top, is rather than teaching you an exact script, um, it's important to focus on understanding the talking points. Right. And how to deliver them in a simple and effective way, because the way I say it may not be the way you say it. Right. Like I can tell you my script in my tone of voice and the, the way I use my words. Right. But Dev speaks differently. Mark speaks differently. Blanca speaks differently. And so rather than saying like, hey, this is the script, copy my script and memorize it. And these are words like you don't even use like in your vocabulary. It's better that you put it into your own words, into a way that's comfortable for you. But in order to do that, you need to know the bullet points and the talking points and like how to just explain those, right? And so that's the key part of any script training is not memorizing someone else's script, but making this script your own and using this as more of a guide. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So let's look at a couple things. Uh, seller talking points. So the main talking point you're going to see with both sellers and buyers is we first need to be able to explain the changes that are happening, right? Like that's like the from a 30,000 foot view, what's the change, right? What was the lawsuit about? You don't necessarily need to get into like detail of the lawsuit, I don't think. Um, I think you're just, if you do that, you're kind of going down a path that's gonna get you in trouble. Um, but you need to know how to explain like what the result was, right? And that's what we've been doing, right? Hey, has anybody taken the time to explain to you the new changes that are happening as of the 17th? And so the first thing you need to be able to do is just explain that in a simple way, right? So what I'm saying is like, hey, with these new changes, commissions are now separate, right? Before it used to be uh, the listing agent is charging a fee to the seller. And from that fee, they would share part of that commission with the buyer agent, right? And so the listing agent would share part of their commission with the buyer agent. It was all being charged to the seller. That's the way it was done before, right? Just if I had to keep it real simple. The way it's being done now is it's being separated. If I'm your listing agent, we have an agreement of what my fee is. When the buyer meets with their agent, they have an agreement of what their fee is, right? And it's it's signed, it's agreed upon up front, it's negotiated, and it's in writing, and it's transparent. Hey, this is my fee for my services. This is my fee for my services, right? And that's basically what's going on now. So keep it really, really simple, right? Um, how does it affect a seller? right? It's kind of the next talking point. And so the way it affects sellers is um, it's going to be a negotiation process, right? Is what I would say. Hey, let's say my fee to this, to you guys is 3%, Mr. Seller. Um, the buyer, you know, has their own agreement with their agent, but they may ask you to cover some of those costs when they submit their offer, right? Um, the buyer may or may not have an extra two or 3% or whatever they're going to pay their agent. And so they, that may come up in the offer negotiations when they submit their offer, 
they may try to roll that into the offer. And so those are things we need to look at as offers come in. We're going to dissect each offer and we're going to figure out what you're going to walk away with at the end of the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's the second point, right? The concessions and compensation to the buyer agent, right? So the second point, this is the talk track. Hey, what to expect, right? What to expect? When we put your house on the market, Mr. Seller, we're going to get offers. Some offers are going to ask for credits towards their commission. Some offers are, might ask for credit towards their other closing costs. Some offers might ask you to pay their buyer agent X percent of the commission. And we're going to kind of take those as they come in. And we're going to negotiate and see what's the best price and best terms for you. We're going to compare all the offers and we'll see who's the best, who's the winner, basically. Right now, should you participate? This leads to kind of what you're saying. Should you participate in these credits or concessions? Well, it depends. Depends at the end of the day how strong the offer is. Right. What are you walking away with at the end of the day? Right now, there's pros and cons, you know, to participating or not participating. You know, if there's four houses on your same street that are going for sale. And you're you're uh, willing to you know participate in these negotiations and you know make these concessions if the offer is good, and the other ones are not. Well, hey, that may affect whether someone wants to come see your house or not, or whether even the buyer can afford to buy your house, right? Because if three percent of a million dollars, that's another thirty thousand dollars, right? So now that's a thirty thousand dollar problem that the buyer might have, you know, that they got to try to solve when they're when they're putting offers on homes. So should you participate or not? It's really up to you. I would recommend that you stay, keep stay open-minded. And I would recommend that we look at all the offers. We don't, we don't just say no. We, we bring all the offers in. And then we put them up against each other and we analyze them together and we see which one is going to make the most sense for you. Right? right? So um, I'm going to stop right there. Right? Questions? What Tabitha said, right? Conversation. With your seller, because there is an option now, right? Well, we're, we're kind of discovering that there's an option to go ahead and offer that in the private remarks. That yeah. My my seller is willing to offer concessions, right? To kind of go into what Tap is saying is that she said, "Hey, I'm encouraging my sellers to go ahead and put that in. That I can. They're allowing me or giving me permission to put that in." Correct. Right. So that, that that's how is that what you're wanting to have that conversation? How you're yeah, how you're encouraging them to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm not swaying from that, but again, I guess what you're saying makes more sense because we'll review as they come in. If there's a, a good number and they want it, to, then we'll talk about it. Because I don't use I'm a, I haven't had I haven't had the scenario. Yet. Yeah. So pretty much business as usual. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the main thing, guys, is you need to have these conversations up front, right? Well, I was on a mastermind, watching a mastermind earlier, um, doing my own training with a bunch of team leaders from EXP. And like Daniel Beer, what he's saying, he's I'm, I'm having this conversation up front. I'm not waiting till later to have this conversation is I'm already setting the stage of what to expect and possible scenarios. Yeah. Right. And I'm already talking to my seller and saying, hey, are you going to be willing to participate in something like this? Right. We don't necessarily have to hold you to a number or maybe you can hold them to a number. Would, are you willing to pay at least 2% right, for a good offer? right? And then this way later on when you get the offers, it's not a surprise at that point. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and, and what, the way I look at it is as a listing agent, what is your guys' job? As a listing agent, what is your role as a listing agent? Get them top dollar, about that. Get them top dollar right? Top and, dollar, protect their interests, guide them, all that stuff. Right? Top dollar, protect their interests. Now, and it's also to market the property. Right. In order to get to the top dollar, you say this all the time. What did you have to drive? How many eyeballs? As many eyeballs to the property. Yeah. 
Right? So if I'm taking that, if I'm taking that mindset, that my job to list your properties is drive as many eyeballs so that I can bring the price up. Yeah. Do you think it's in our best interest to put in those remarks? Hey, we are willing to give concessions. Yeah. We're willing because what, what's going to happen? You're going to have agents that say, "Man, you know what? These guys are looking to give concessions. I'm going to drive my clients to that property, drive those eyeballs over." Yeah. That's what I'm looking at from that perspective. Right now, now whether you whether now when we accept the offer, you know, it's all negotiable. It's all negotiable. So debate out there. Yeah. We debate that we were willing to participate in this. And so, so you don't want, just to reiterate that, right? You don't want to like spring this on the seller at the end, right? You want to have this conversation up front. And that's why these are talking points. And then you're educating them on what's going on, how it's going to work, what to expect. And then, so later on, there's no surprise when they get an offer and they're asking for a 2% concession or 3% or two and a half or whatever it is. It's not like, Hey, I don't know about this. What's this thing. And now you have this big old hurdle you're trying to battle, right? You have those conversations up front, you give them scenarios. And then when those offers come in, hey, remember that thing we talked about when we first met, we first listed your home, right? This is what's happening. Hey, out of the three offers we received, all three of them are asking for anywhere from two to 3% in commissions or concessions towards the buyer agent's commission, right? So now let's go ahead and see what we can negotiate, right? Can we bring the price up? Can we negotiate the commission, the concessions down, combination of the two? Let's see who's the best offer at the end of the day, right? Um, unrepresented buyer fee, right? So that's another thing that you got to talk about as well, right? If you're listing a property and you have a buyer who walks in, that's unrepresented. How are we going to handle that buyer? That's part of the discussion. It's part of the listing agreement that you have to talk about. And so what I would say is, Hey, Mr. Seller, um, in the event, you know, in the scenario, it's rare, you know, sometimes it happens. There may be a buyer who approaches us and says, Hey, I don't have an agent. I want to make an offer. Can I work with you guys direct? Right. In that scenario, what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and service that client. I will still be your agent. I'm not going to represent them unless they want me to, but I can put the offer together. I can coordinate the paperwork, the additional, the paperwork, the additional time, the additional effort to make that offer work. But there's going to be a cost for that. And my fee is this, right? So what I would charge is I'm going to charge an extra 1% or 2% or two and a half or whatever you know, goes to the standard buyer agent anyways, right? Whatever you think is the going rate, your going rate, that's what we would charge. Now, of course, Mr. Seller, you don't have to take that offer, right? But if I do work with them, there's going to be additional paperwork. It's additional work that we have to do. So there will be a, a, a fee that we attach if you decide to move forward with them, right? But once again, we're going to take all offers. We're going to put them all together, including this one, if it does come up, and we're going to see which one gets you the most money at the end of the day. Right. That's how we're going to handle that. Does that make sense, Mr. Seller? And that's it. Right. So I'm going to stop right there. Right. We're, we're, we're going a little, this is a lot of things right here. I want to make sure we're not missing anything. Um, clarification on any of these points here. Who needs clarification on any of these? Cause I'm going to call on you right now to spit it back to me. So if you need clarification, let me give you the answers now to the test before I quiz you. Right. Hey, Enrique Antonio here. What's up, Antonio? Talk to me. Hey, so uh, so quick question. So if we, I guess if we approach the, um, the seller with that, and maybe this is a topic for a different um, discussion, but if there's concern that it might be like a conflict of interest, uh, how do we go about that or what's the discussion looks like there? A conflict of interest of you representing the buyer? Like, in other words, if the seller is, you know, saying, okay, if you're representing me and potentially putting together the offer, um, you know, for the unrepresented buyer, then, you know, how can you possibly be, um, you know, representing me to the fullest? Uh, I mean, you basically say, hey, it's, it's really up to you if you want us to do that, right? Like, at the end of the day, you're in control. That's what I would, that's what I always put back, right? That's like, I want you guys to remember that one, right? Because this one, like, is going to apply to both buyers and sellers. At the end of the day, you're in control. I can only make recommendations. I can only create opportunities. I can only bring buyers to the table. I could help you negotiate, but at the end of the day, you got to decide if this is a good deal for you or not, right? And so whether I'm representing them or another agent's representing them, we still need to analyze the offer. Even if this buyer comes to me, this buyer may not be the one that's willing to pay you the most. 
the one that may be willing to pay you the most might come from a different agent, right? Because I don't get to choose how much a buyer is willing to pay. We're just handling the process, right? So what I would say, Mr. Seller, is let's not get too caught up on that, right? Let's get all the offers in and let's weigh them out one by one, right? And let's see which one gets you the most money in your pocket. Is that fair? And then I would close it off with, is that fair, right? And when you explain it like that, guys, like nine times out of 10, they're like, yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, let's not get into the weeds. Let's see what the offers are first. Because what if this offer is giving you like 200 grand more than the other ones? Are you going to complain then? And I would say that. I mean, that would be a win for you, right, Mr. Yeah, Seller? If that, if this other buyer, they happen to come to me, but they're willing to pay you 50K more than your highest other offer, would that have been a win for you? Right? Yeah. Okay. So then let's see how they come in and then we'll cross that bridge kind of when we get there. Right? Does that answer your question, Antonio? Yeah, thank you. Colin. Okay, so now I'm gonna call on some people right now. I'm gonna play a little game and then we're gonna move on to, we'll, we'll do a couple of these, we'll maybe do two of these and then we'll move on to the buyer talking points, right? So we're explaining the perspective when you're dealing with the seller right now and then we'll move on to the perspective when you're dealing with the buyer. Some of them are gonna overlap, right? Um, but some of them might be specific towards, towards buyers. Um, so the NAR changes. Let's see who can uh, break this down for me. My. <laughs> so I want you to hit it just a clear, brief explanation, right? I, the simpler you can make it, the small, the shorter, the better. Simple explanation. How does it affect the seller? How do the commissions work going forward? So I'm the seller. So hey, my, how, what's these changes going on? kind of touched on that right so that was good let's give it up for my guys put on the spot right like you don't necessarily have to go in order but like just make sure you're hitting those points right like a brief explanation of what happened how it how the commissions are going to work and how it may affect the seller right that's the basic overview right um we put you on the spot i mean you hit all the points in there right and so the only the only recommendation is just you know obviously practice it more and just try to figure out like you know, if there's a simple way you can make that more concise, right? Um, but it it made sense, All right? Okay, now my you get to call on somebody else for either concessions or unrepresented buyer. So you got to call someone out from this room right here. You got to call someone out and say, you know, Jason, explain concessions and compensation to the buyer agent. So basically, this is the talking point, right? And these are so the bullet points that you should touch on while you're explaining it, right? Well, let me stop you right there. I only want you to talk about the concessions part of it, right? We're assuming you already went through there. So we're just drilling that one little piece, right? So, uh, hey, there's going to be something called, there's something called seller concessions. Let me just explain how that works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just short. Just only that point, right? Just breaking it down.
Does it make sense, Mike? You can question it, right? This is a role play, right? So. So what I would do, Tabitha, great. Just get up for Tabitha, right? We're, we're putting everybody on the spot, guys. So I don't ex I expect you guys to fumble this a little bit, right? Because, yeah. Yeah, this one keeps moving on. Is that the one that's broken? Mm. Right, if this breaks and I fall back, so it's on you. It's not recorded. It is recorded. What? Hold on. It's going to make that sound. Ready? There you go. All right. Feedback. Um, what I would do is I would look to just hit these points right here, right? I would just say, hey, what to expect, blah, 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 right? Should you participate? Let's talk about the pros and cons, blah, 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 right? Because I think if you just follow this format, it makes it easy. So you're not just having to like think of like how to say it. That's why I just put the bullet points for you, right? So if you have to say it again, like just look at the paper, right? And just remember what to expect, right? So, hey, let's, so hey, Mr. Seller, let's talk about how concessions work and what to expect, right? We're probably gonna get offers. Some offers are gonna ask for credits or concessions. Some offers may not, right? We're gonna look at those. We're gonna weigh them out. We're going to see which one gets you the most money, right? If I had to just keep it real simple, right? Now, should you participate in concessions? Case by case. These are the pros and cons, right? And give, So let's try that one more time, right? But just, just follow this format. So, hey, Mr. Seller, concessions, you know? Yeah. Some may, some may not, right? So let's do this. Let's do this. What to expect and then stop looking at the paper and then you just tell me. what. So if, if I'm a seller, what would I expect when these offers come in? Yeah. Well, that's it. That's pretty much it, right? And and see which one makes the most sense, right? Like that's it. Real simple. I think what it is, I I think you're thinking it has to be more complicated. We're we're trying to just dumb it down, right? Because the more complicated we make it, the average person is not going to understand it. You're going to go over their head, right? And so we got to take this complex thing of this lawsuit and all these things, and we got to make it really simple for a third grader, right? So think like, how would I explain this to a third grader, right? Um, yeah. Now, Tabitha, should I participate in concessions? Why or why not, right? Pros or cons, what would you say? I would just say, hey, should you participate in concessions? Well, there's pros and cons, right? The pro might be this, the con might be that. And I would just keep it real simple, right? Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's case by case, right? That's the overarching like, Let's not get too worried about that. It's case by case. This is just going to be part of the transaction, right? So. Let's go. Perfect. 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 <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Uh, okay, Tabitha, who are you calling on for unrepresented buyer? Call on someone and then ask them, hey, please explain up unrepresented buyer fee to me. Okay. Only that part, right? Only that part. Uh, scenario. It's, it's a little bit of a term, but I mean, it can happen, so I want to make sure we are educated on the possibility. Sometimes we might have a buyer we can walk through, maybe like an open house, and they don't have an agent. So 
Um, so I can go ahead and hand out all the paperwork for you guys in, in case that does happen. I will still be representing you, and the fee for this is about a percent. Would that be okay? Sure. That's fine. All right. Nice. Right. <laughs> and then I would I would close it off with once again we're gonna look at all the offers right yeah no but just the overarching thing is come back with hey like we're gonna look at all the offers and we're gonna see which one makes sense and we'll decide how you want to negotiate from there right so that I think that's what you gotta put at the end of these right because we're really like hypothetical scenario but then we don't know how it's gonna play out right. Unrepresented buyer because I didn't want our seller to think we're already attached to the buyer. Yeah. I said the unrepresented buyer may not be able to compete with any of the other offers. So in that scenario, we're gonna move forward with who makes sense for you. Yeah. And he was like, Oh, okay, okay. So no, because what if our buyer doesn't have the buying power that some of these other offers do? Yeah. We're gonna do what's best for you at the end of the day mm -hmm. and your legal system. And our client was like, Oh, okay, okay, make sense. Right. Right away, but if, if we would have said, if my buyer comes in, uh, we kept it, we kept repeating unrepresented buyers. Yeah. So still looking for their best. Exactly. Okay. Um, Let's go. Let's move on. Buyer talking points. Good job, guys. Good job, everybody. Okay. Uh, Buyer talking points, right? Now we're talking to a buyer, right? And so you see like the first part, the NAR changes. It's gonna uh it's pretty much the same, same explanation. I how it affects buyers is what I should have wrote. So that's a typo. Should be how it affects buyers. And so really quickly, who can tell me the NAR changes in terms of a buyer, right? Just a quick explanation, how it's gonna affect the buyer and how the commission's gonna work. Mark, putting you on the spot. Okay, okay. So some of the changes that may have Commissions were um, agreed upon by the seller's agent and split between the seller and the buyer. Now, moving forward, they have their own separate agreement for the representation where we will have our agreement for my representation and what I'll do to help you. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm looking out for you and your best interest, and I'll negotiate the best terms and offer for you. Boom. That's it. Really good job. Right? Simple, not too complicated, right? You want that's, I think that's the biggest thing, guys. We got to make this stuff simple, right? Keep it simple because the more complicated you make it, the more the client's mind is going to go into a, into the weeds, right? When it starts going to the weeds and all these what ifs, then what they do is they start pushing back, right? So simple, simple. And it's just explaining to them that we work for you. We're going to negotiate the best terms, negotiate the best price for you, right? And it goes back to Rich is saying, it's like, you know, just when it all comes together, we're, we're going to, we're going to unpack it. Yeah. And see, you see how that, that little closing is kind of, it's universal on both the seller and buyer side. Hey, when the offers come in, we're going to look at them all. We're going to negotiate and see which one's the best offer. Hey, Mr. Buyer, at the end of the day, we're going to submit our, our best offer. We're going to try to get the seller to pay for your costs. We're going to try to get everything wrapped into the deal. We're trying to negotiate the best price in terms for you. It's the same thing, right? It's really general because we really don't know, right? We can go submit an offer on a property and they got 10 offers, right? And it's going to be a different negotiation. We go one that's been sitting on the market. There's no offers. Now it's a different negotiation as well. So we really don't want to like pigeonhole ourselves. say it's going to be exactly like this, right? Because it is going to be case by case. Um, okay. So though that kind of covers this first, first set here. Now agreements uh, to tour, right? So this is the part you got to talk about the agreements. You're going to have to explain that. And so we want to make sure that everybody understands the different types of agreements and some of the talking points with that, right? Number one is the single property agreement. Everybody understands this agreement is just for this property, right? In order for me to open the door for you and show you this property, we have to sign an agreement, just basically saying that I'm going to be helping you with this property. If you end up wanting to buy this property, this is my compensation, right? And then we'll negotiate that. We'll try to negotiate that as part of the deal when you put the offer. Um, a standard agreement is going to be where we put a term in there, right? 
And so it can be either like a 30 day trial, which is a lot of my clients are doing like a test drive. If we just met each other, test me out for 30 days, that gives us the opportunity to go look at more properties, get to know each other, see if we're a good fit. Um, or if you already decided like, Hey, you really want to work with us and we want to enter into a longer term, we can do a 90 day or a six month. Right. Um, and this, the benefits is that we're not having to sign an agreement every single time we look at a property that can become kind of tedious. That's the standard agreement, the test drive. Um, now we got to talk about exclusive versus non-exclusive, right? There's two different contracts that you're going to see out there. As you talk to agents, there's an exclusive agreement, meaning that once you sign an agreement, you're locked into that agent. And if you want to cancel, they don't have to let you cancel until the term expires. That's an exclusive agreement, right? Versus a non-exclusive, the ones that we're using with EXP, just so everybody knows, those are non-exclusive. They can cancel anytime um, by just sending you, you know, letting you know, hey, I want to cancel. Now, why is that beneficial just for internal use? It's because you're disarming like what people's thoughts are. Well, I don't want to sign this agreement with you. What if I don't like you? I don't know you yet, right? Right. And so I'd rather sign a non-exclusive because there's less hurdles. And then I just got to do my job. If I'm doing my job, I'm showing value. We're working together. Like there's a really rare chance that someone's going to cancel if you're doing a good job, right? If they want to cancel with you, that means something's going on. Either they're not serious. You guys didn't hit it off. It's not a good fit. Maybe you dropped the ball somewhere. I don't know, right? It could be that as well. Um, but I would rather let people out of an agreement and let them try their luck somewhere else than to have them like pissed at me because I won't let them out of it. Right? It not participate, right? And that leads to the cancellation guarantee part. So Mr. Mr. Buyer, what we have is called what's called a cancellation guarantee. So this document already says that you can cancel any time, right? So even if you sign this agreement and let's say tomorrow on the way home, you want to play a joke on me and just say, hey, I don't want to work with you. You could just sign this and send me, text me a picture and the agreement's canceled, right? That's how confident I am in my service. Like, I don't think you're going to cancel. I think you're going to see the value in us, but you're free. You know, it's your home. It's your purchase. You know, I want to make sure you're comfortable working with us, right? And so here's the cancellation guarantee that we give up front, you know, but while we're working together, we're working together, right? So that's agreement to tour. Um, so let's stop there. Now I'm going to ask someone else to explain this. Do you want to try? <laughs> Sharon, yes, you. Sharon, I'm putting Sharon. No, I was putting Sharon on the spot. Sharon, I'm calling on Sharon. Sharon, from what you know, I don't expect you to know all of this, just FYI, right? But from just your basic understanding, you keep it real simple and short explain, you know, the different bullet points, right? Oh, right there. <laughs> very good, right? Super simple, clear, concise, right? Like if you explain that to someone, like, boom, okay, that makes sense, right? Not a big deal. <laughs> but your tonality, you were already making it seem like not a big deal. Your gestures, like going through it, I know you were trying to think it, but you were like, if you were standing with the buyer and you were saying it that way, you're already making it seem like no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome job. Uh, okay. Let's move uh, on, guys. Seller concessions, right? What to expect? Should you participate? The pros and cons. So, from a buyer's perspective, right? From a buyer's perspective, um, how would I explain this? I would say, hey, Mr. Buyer, when we submit your offer, there's a couple of different ways we can go about it, right? Well, you have an agreement with us. You know, this is our fee, you know, our, our compensation. 
is 3%, let's say for example. Now what we can do is when we submit your offer, we can ask the seller to credit back 3% to cover my cost, right? Now that's a way that we can do it. Now there's gonna be pros and cons to that, right? And it really depends on the particular property, depends on how many offers are on that property, how much competition we're going up against. Um, because essentially if you offer a million dollars on a property, but you're asking for 3% back, the seller is really getting an offer of 970,000 because three a million minus 3%, right? Now, if another offer comes in and they offer a million and they're not asking for any concessions, right? Or they're only asking for a 1% concession. Well, now that offer is offering a little bit more. And so that's where we might have to negotiate whether we got to either negotiate on how much the seller is going to pay or maybe bump up our price to, to get to be more competitive, right? And so, of course, we can go in, submit our offer, and we see what happens and get some feedback from the seller. They may counter offer us. They may really like your offer and go with it. It's going to be a case-by-case -case type of deal, right? Now, that's how I would explain it. That might have been too long, right? You guys might be able to make it simple, simpler than that, right? And so I want to throw it back on somebody else who hasn't gone yet. Um, Shri, seller concessions and like how they play a role for the buyers. What to expect? Should they participate? Pros and cons. Okay, cool. Any advice for uh for Shri guys? Maybe elaborate a little bit on the pros and cons. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little more. We so, we practice it in the morning. So just elaborate a little bit. Hey, hey, Mr. Seller, if we're competing with multiple offers, we may have to make an adjustment just to be competitive. It's really going to depend um, case by case. However, what we'll do is we'll submit and see what the seller comes back. Yeah. And then we may have to make an adjustment. Okay, back to street. Now say that <laughs> in your own words, right? No, that was good. Like basically, Um, good. Yeah. I think you're on the right track. I would just, I would work on just rehearsing a little bit more and just try to make it a little more simple, a little simple. Right. And so once again, I would say, Hey, when we're making what to expect, right. When we're making our offer, we can ask the seller to give us a credit or a concession to cover my cost. Right. That's it. Yeah. Right. And it's okay to say what's your cost. Yeah. To, yeah. To, or to cover my compensation, right? You can say my compensation. So, hey, what to expect? We can submit your offer. We can ask the seller to cover my compensation, right? As a concession, all right? And that's that's how we can submit our offer. Now, should we ask for that or not? Well, it's gonna, it's gonna depend. Depends how many offers are on the property, how competitive do we have to be, where are the other offers at? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strategize, submit our best offer, and let's see what the seller comes back with. They may counter us, they may accept us, and we may have to negotiate. All right, I'll try one more time. Uh, so one, one, yeah. Boom, that's it, right? Much better, right? Clean it up, concise. You see, like the other way you were going, like a lot of things, you're trying to get your thoughts together, but this is why we're practicing here, guys, right? No one, I don't expect anybody to be an expert, but this is why you want to practice these things so that when you now go talk to your buyer, you're, you're going to remember, okay, simplify, 
what to expect, pros and cons. That's it, right? Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. And so that's the thing is, is your job at the end of the day, guys, is to educate, give options, guide them. And then the client has to make the decision at the end of the day, right? But you want them to make an educated decision and you want to understand their situation and give them recommendations and advice, right? If you know they don't have a lot of money, right? They're coming in with a small down payment, you know, they barely got the down payment, then we're gonna, we need to ask for concessions, right? To cover the, the cost. Now, so instead our strategy might, well, let's come a little come a little bit higher on our price so that even after the concessions, we're still a really competitive price. That helps you without having to come out of pocket, that helps the seller get a good price, creates a win-win, right? And so now that's that's where the strategy comes into play, right? So you have to also understand your client and then be able to advise them the right. Uh, let's see how we're doing on time, 40. Um, okay, so anybody need clarification on any of these? We kind of broke each one of them down. Are there any of them, uh, this is the chance to ask, right? Any of them that you're like, hey, I still don't understand that or I still don't know how to explain it and you want some clarification because what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna break up into pairs and then we're gonna, you guys are each gonna role play all of the points. Right, but is there any of them that you want us to discuss right now and give you a little clarification on? Okay, exclusive versus non-exclusive. That's a good question. So uh, let's talk about that one more time. So for the for the uh, buyer broker agreements, there's an exclusive version and there's a non-exclusive version. The one that you pull out of the car forms, that's an exclusive one. And what that means is once you sign that, they cannot cancel. Both parties have to agree to cancel. It's almost like a listing agreement where you can't just cancel your listing agreement. The broker has to also cancel as well, right? So that essentially locks you in for the term of the agreement unless the agent or brokerage decides to cancel, let you cancel, right? And so if I were to sign an exclusive agreement with Mark, if Mark doesn't want to let me cancel and it's a six-month agreement, he's like, no, I already did work. You're not canceling. You have to wait till it expires. I can't cancel. If I go try to do business with another agent, I would still owe Mark a commission, right? So that's exclusive, right? Now the non-exclusive, which is the EXP versions, there was strategy on why they made them non-exclusive. The reason they made them non-exclusive is because they think that's better for business. They think not locking someone into a contract, giving them the right to choose, giving them the right to try out an agent, giving them the right to get out if they don't think it's a good fit, right? And it's non-exclusive. That means they can cancel at any time. They just have to let you know in writing, right? So if they were to, and that's why we give them that cancellation guarantee. So if they were to sign that, it already says, hey, I want to cancel. They just got to send that to you and you have to cancel. Now, if they want to cancel, that doesn't mean you're not going to call them. You're not going to try to figure it out. You're not going to try to work it out, but it doesn't lock them in if they just don't want to work with you. First be a client. Yeah. But with a lot of agents think, well, what if I do work and then they cancel, right? That's why in the agreement though, it also protects you. There's also it, what it says is even after the cancellation, you can put a time period in which if they go try to buy a house that you worked on and you showed them, they would still owe you compensation, right? So that's why you want to make sure you fill that that thing out. I think we talked about it, right? Don't put zero because then what happens is, let's say I go show one, two, three Main Street and then the buyer like says, oh, I want to cancel, but I already showed it to them. I already did the work. I already did disclosures. We looked at comps and they say, hey, Shri, I want to cancel. You know, here's the cancellation guarantee. And then tomorrow... They go talk to Mark and Mark says, hey, I'll do it for 1% and you were charging 3% and then Mark, now you find out that they're in contract on that property that you did the work on, right? So that protects you in there and you have to write a time period on there, right? I would write at least 45, 90 days, six months, whatever, right? I would say a few months. 
90 days is reasonable, right? Yeah. Likely that, that, that housing is yeah, number. probably even 30 or 60 days, yeah. right? I would say, like you said, 45 days. Yeah. Makes sense, right? That's easy to present. Yeah. yeah. And then I would, That's and the way you explain that, hey, what this basically means, like, hey, if I do a bunch of work, I show you a home, you know, you can't just cancel and go write the offer with somebody else, right? So this also protects my time, right? But if we're just not working well together, you cancel anytime. Just send me this cancellation guarantee. Here, here you go up front, right? Yeah. Sign it and just text me a picture. And, you know, we just cancel our agreement, right? So there's no risk to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, any other questions, guys? Any Anything else you want me to break down on here before we break up into role play groups? Anything, Ricky? I mean, I don't know if you can just do some scenarios. I yeah. I want them to do that through breakup. Or if they have, a, you guys have a scenario, right? Right now, Ricky did a great job. We're just kind of breaking everything down. Scenarios, no. Yeah, we're not going to do scenarios today. Right now, I want you guys to be able to explain all of these okay. talking points, okay. right? This is going to be all your presence because scenarios will we'll have a, a million yeah, scenarios. Right, this is like the definition, but these guys are out in the field and they've seen it head on. Yeah. So I would like, I mean, that's the challenge is some of us don't know the definitions yet. Like don't know how to explain them very well. Right. So we're, we're going to, we're going to go real granular with this, right. We're going to break it, really break it down. And I want to make sure at least everyone can explain it. Right. Cause if we're giving out Zillow flex leads and we're all these different things and yeah. You don't know how to explain the changes of the NAR, right? Like we're behind, right? Or you don't know how to explain what concessions means, yeah. right? And so, and uh, explain it in your own words in a conversational manner. Scenarios, we'll do scenarios on our next training, right? Well, that's, we're going to keep going. Oh, you can cancel too. Yeah, you can cancel. Yeah, so it works both ways, right? You can cancel. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you just stop participating, right? So even they could do the same thing. Like, let's say you signed a six-month exclusive agreement and they don't want to work with you, but you don't want to cancel. They could just say, all right, well, we're just putting our search on hold now, all right? You can't make them buy a house, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you can't make them participate, so... Remember, all parties have to be willing to participate for these things to move forward, right? Um, okay, so let's break them into groups, grab a partner. And what I want you to do is I want you to run through every single one, right? NAR changes, go. Concessions, go, right? And then you give each other feedback. Hey, and do this, guys. Guys, go one for one, one for one, okay? He says the NAR, give him feedback, and then you say the NAR, right? Go one for one. Uh, I'll do it with you. Okay. Um, come over here. So for anybody watching, they can hear us. Um, Let's see. Uh, there you go. Okay, Mark. So we're going to go. NAR changes in terms of talking to a seller. So just give me the basic explanation. How does it affect sellers? How do commissions work? Okay, uh, Mr. Yeah. Seller, with the new changes, um, kind of the way it used to work before is we would agree upon a commission percentage and then it would be split between the seller and the buyer. Um, now, it, the way it may affect us moving forward is it's decoupled, so we will have an agreed upon commission for my services and the buyer will have a separate agreement with their buyer agent. Um, that's kind of how that works. Any questions on that? No, makes perfect sense. Um, okay. Concessions, compensation, the buyer agent, what to expect, should participate, pros and cons. Okay. So when we start getting offers on your property, the way it may work is that the offers coming in from the buyer side may have, uh, concessions to cover the buyer's representation. Um, obviously what is the concession mean? Concession would basically be the commission to cover their services. Okay. All right. So, and Shoot the pros and cons of this one pros, you know, if we're offering concessions, which I would suggest you're going to drive more traffic to your property and maybe get more offers. Um, the cons, the cons, um, you know, more pocket, more money in your pocket at the yeah. end of the day, if we don't offer a concession. Got it. Okay. Um, so what I would say is because concessions is kind of like a, 
Uh, not everyone might know what that means. So I would also say a, a concession is basically a seller credit. You're giving the credit back, right? Um, because like right, that's what I was looking for when I asked you what does concessions mean, right? So and so you can say it's a credit from the seller, right? Um, okay. that's how I would just clarify that because some people may not know what that means, right? Like it's it's more like hard jargon, right? But okay. if you needed to simplify it more. And then pros and cons, I liked how you explained that. You said, hey, the pros is if we're offering concessions or willing to participate, we may drive more offers, which when we get more offers, that may drive your price. Right. right? The cons are, hey, we just got to take that into account when we're hitting each offer. We're going to look at every offer and we're going to say, hey, even after any concessions, how much are you walking away with? We'll compare this to. Okay. Uh, let's try that one more time. Okay, so with concessions, what to expect is, you know, we'll get offers on the property and we'll look at them individually. Um, one of the pro the pros of this uh, for offering concessions is, you know, with, with being able to offer credits to the buyer, you know, you'll you'll get more eyes on your property and hopefully get more offers because of that. And then, you know, we can work the, the price up from there. The cons is, is um, you know, we'll have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but at the end of the day, you want to see what you get from each offer. Okay, perfect. Um, unrepresented buyer. Okay, so Enrique, in the in the rare scenario we have an un, unrepresented buyer, you know, gonna, yeah. so basically I'm going to market the hell out of your property. I yeah. want to get as many eyes on it as possible. You may get someone who just saw it on Zillow and decided to come to my open house, and they don't have an agent yet. Um, they may want to write that offer directly with me, and you know it would be additional work for me to do the contract and uh, you know facilitate that communication back and forth. But then the day I'm looking out for your best interest, I would just charge an additional 1% to represent, to help facilitate that offer. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Perfect. That's it. All right. And it doesn't have to be 1%, just FYI. It's, right, that's whatever, all negotiable, yeah. right? So you got to figure out like how much two, are you charging? Three, One, two, two and a half, whatever it's going to be. Um, perfect. Um, buyer talking points. So give me the NAR changes. From a perspective of a buyer. Okay, Enrique. Um, with some of the changes, um, what's going on is before there would be an agreed upon commission from the seller and the seller agent, and then that commission would be split between the seller and the buyer. Um, how that may change going forward is they now are going to have their own separate agreement to or their representation, whereas we will have our own separate agreement for my representation. Um, so the way the commissions work is. Um, I guess I kind of explained that yeah. part, right? The only thing I, I would say on there is maybe say like, hey, now you would be responsible, right? For compensation um, to to your agent, basically. And the way it would work is either you would pay me directly or we can negotiate that as part of the offer, okay. right? Yeah. So we'll try that one more time. Okay. So with the new changes, Enrique, uh, previously the seller and the seller agent had a, an agreed upon commission where they would split it between the buyer and the seller agent. Now, what the way it changes is decoupled, where they will have their own agreed upon commission for their representation, and we will have our own agreed upon, uh, you know, commission for representation. And it's my job to negotiate the best terms and conditions for your offer and try to uh, negotiate those concessions from the seller. Okay, cool. Uh, agreements. Break down the agreements. Okay, so. There's a couple of types of agreements that we now have to use in order to tour properties. Um, so we can either do it on a case-by-case -case basis where we have it for each individual property. Now that may be cumbersome to do it each and every time. Um, what a lot of my clients are doing now is to do like, you know, a test drive where we can do it up to 30 days, see if we like it and extend it from there. Um, there's also uh, two different types of agreements, exclusive versus non-exclusive. Exclusive means you have to work with me and me only. Um, what I'm doing with my clients is I'm doing a non-exclusive agreement where you can cancel this at any time if whatever, whatever reason you don't like what I wore that day, you know, you know, you, whatever reason we don't click, you know, you can just sign this form here, send it to me and we can go ahead and you can go work with another agent. Got it. Um, cancellation. Uh, cancellation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And I would, so what I would say, I would just add, and I would just say the word cancellation. Guarantee. I would say what we do is we do a non-exclusive and we even have this document called the cancellation guarantee. So sign it, text me a picture, our agreement's canceled, right? You don't owe me anything. Um, all right, one more time, but okay. touch on that cancellation okay. guarantee. So there's a couple of different type of uh, touring agreements that are offered now. So we have a single property agreement where we would have to sign an agreement each and every property we see together. It could be a little cumbersome. 
Um, what I'm suggesting for a lot of my clients is just meeting and to do like a 30 day trial to see if we get along and you like working with me. And then we can always extend it past that if we like how each other work. Um, now there's two different types of agreements, exclusive and non-exclusive. The exclusive agreement is gonna mean that you can work with me and me only. The non-exclusive uh, basically allows you to cancel our agreement at any time. We have a cancellation guarantee. So for whatever reason you decide you don't want to work with me, we can go ahead and sign this agreement and we cancel our relationship. And work with someone else. Okay, perfect. Um, seller concessions, what to expect? Did you participate? How's that going to affect me as a buyer? So seller concessions, what to expect is when we're writing offers, I'm going to obviously want to... Uh, so get the best terms and conditions for you. Try to negotiate all those concessions from credits from the seller to cover my fees. Uh, and then, you know, some of the pros to that uh, we'll have to kind of weigh each situation, right? So, um, some properties be made maybe more competitive where we need to look at, you know, our terms in terms of the offer price and the concessions, whereas some may be less competitive and they're more open to negotiating. Perfect. Let me go. Good. How you feel about it? Good. Fine. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, any questions? Any anything else? I think you're good, bro. I think. Yeah, but I think it's just internalizing this stuff, right? As you internalize more of these things, it's gonna now just become part of your language, right? And then, um, I like I really like what you said, where you said, "Hey, I'm gonna market the crap out of your property, and we may get a buyer that wants to just come write the offer with us directly." I like how you just. You got off script and you just like said it like in your own voice, right? And I think I think people will appreciate that when you're just kind of being real with them. It doesn't always have to be so like textbook, right? Your humor and all that, right? And it's gonna it, it makes it makes you human human, right? Uh good stuff. Anybody watching at home, anybody have any questions, type them in the chat. Anything you want me to uh break down or cover for you, let me know. Uh, Enrique, I have a question. Um, do we have this uh this document on our PRG tools? Um, yeah, I will actually oh, share this in Slack. Oh, okay, and, got it. And I'll put it on the PRG tools as well. All right. So thank after you. it's over, I'll I'll add everything and I'll email it to everybody and put it on Slack. Okay, sounds good. Along <laughs> with this video as well, it'll it'll all be uploaded. Okay. All right, guys, did everyone get a chance to go? You're still working? Okay. Yeah. There you go, Antonio. Keep it simple, bro. The simpler, the better. Third graders. A third grader needs to understand this. If you have kids, try practicing this on your kids. That'll, that'll get you being able to keep it simple. Uh, Good job. Go, Dan. <laughs> 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 All right. Dan, I'm going to quiz you right now. 
I'm going to quiz you right now, right? We're just practicing the talking points, right? So as brief and sh short, to the point, easy to understand, what are the changes, the NAR changes uh, for buyers, right? How does it affect the buyer? Just briefly explain it, how it affects buyers, how do the commissions work? Wow, that's awesome, man. Okay, so uh, with the NAR settlement, they're no longer allowed to disclose your commissions paid out on the MLS, right? Um, as far as I know is when you, you, you got to sign this, this broker this agreement more before you walk into a property and you got to disclose your, oh, I did, yeah. well, I, did. I, I disclosed the commissions being paid out. Okay. It's 3%. And then what I told him, what I, this is what I told this guy. I say, hey, you know what? It says three percent here, but I will do my, I will try my hardest to make sure that the seller of this home is going to pay for this for you. Yeah, it's it's negotiable. Yeah. Said, oh, okay. No, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, I see the three percent, right? I said, oh, shit, I got to pay this three percent, but I mean, I'm. His guard went down when I said, you know what? I'm going to make sure that the seller is going to pay for this, not you. Yeah. I'm going to try my best. Yeah. And he was like, all right. Well, it's all negotiable. It's all negotiable. Cool. Good stuff, man. Um, all right. Really quick. I'm going to quiz somebody. Who wants? Who thinks they got? Um, Mark did a really, really good job of explaining the uh, the tour agreements and the unrepresented buyer. Mark, unrepresented buyer. Break it down for me. The same way you gave it to me earlier. That's it, all right? Um, agreements to tour. Who got this one down? Who could break down these bullet points on the agreements to tour? Or should I just call on somebody? That's it. Let's go, let's go. Go, Shri. There you go. Let's go, Shri. Okay, cool. There we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let's give it up. Um, seller concessions. When you're talking to a seller, oh, concessions, compensation to the buyer agent. My, break that down for me for a seller. I'm a seller. Just explain what that means, how the concessions work. Always. Solid, solid, really good, really good. Uh, okay, seller concessions on the buyer side. So if I'm a buyer, 
How do seller concessions play a role? What should I expect? Should we ask for them or not? Um, I mean, again, what you see at properties, um, it's going to be a case by case situation on based on how it's going to work. Um, let's say if we're looking in areas which are really hot, at that point, the, a per, certain percentage of the commission might be have to be paid for the buyer's responsibility. And the reason is because you want to make sure that the seller's top net line is achieved. On the contrary, let's say if you're looking at properties that has no offers, we can go ahead and get closing costs and get my fees paid from the sellers and you guys don't have to pay anything out of your pocket. Okay, solid, solid. I love the confidence, man. Love the confidence. I think the only thing I would tweak on that um, is just say, hey, it's all negotiable, right? Like just make sure you're adding in that asterisk. Hey, it's all negotiable, right? We'll submit our offer. Because even if it's a hot property, we can still ask for concessions, yeah. right? So, hey, we're going to evaluate the property, see how many offers they have. We can submit our offer and see where we line up, right? See what the seller comes back with. They may counter us, whatever that might be, right? I would just add something something in there in that in that link. Yeah, like so they so they just reiterate that it's negotiable, right? Everything else, solid, solid, solid. Um, anybody else want to take a stab at the NAR changes? Who can break down the NAR changes for me one more time? Just super simple so a third grader understands it. Third grade level, bro. Like I'm a third grader, like what happened? Dad, what happened? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How now? So now how it? So now how does it work? So now how does it work? So now, so commission fees get done. Iron seller, you got it. You got some little mixed up. Okay, one with Shri. Go ahead, try it. You see the difference, right? Just going forward, it's just separate now, right? It's separate. Listing agent has their fee with their agent. Buyer agent has their fee with their agent. And then when you submit an offer, you can try to negotiate that, right? Yeah, right? So one more time. The main thing is just they're separate. Before it used to all be one and they would share. Now it's separate. Listing agent has their fee. Buyer agent has their fee with their client, right? The buyer can still try to ask for that and negotiate that when they submit an offer, right? Yeah. 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 And then what you would say for the seller, hey, when we get offers, we're going to look at the offers and we're going to see what they're asking for. And we're going to compare them and see which one's the better. On a buyer side, when we make our offer, we're going to make our best offer. We're going to see what we're competing with, depending on the property, see what the seller comes back. With, right. So it's kind of like you're just switching them around, but you can use the basic same framework for both sides. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. That's all I got, guys. Was this helpful for you guys? Right? Yeah, just yeah. keep it simple, right? That's the biggest takeaway, guys, is right. learn these, practice them, keep them simple, right? And now, and if you do have those engineer types who want to learn, know all the what ifs, like you need to know it, right? So you need to learn it. But for the majority of people, you just need to keep it really simple, guys, right? Keep it really simple. Um, really quick before you guys leave, I booked a listing appointment yesterday um, from an online lead. And this lady was savvy. She owns multiple properties. She's selling a, the property she's trying to sell is like 1.8 um, here in San Jose. She started asking questions about the commissions, right? She goes, well, yeah, I saw on the news and... And she had her own strategies. I'm even thinking to maybe just offer the buyer a $20,000 credit up front, you know, like, and so 
the way I got that listing appointment was because I knew the information and I was able to have that conversation with her and talk about the pros, the cons, what's going on, what we're seeing right now, you know, what our agents are experiencing. And so from that conversation, she gained confidence, right? And she's like, man, I'm really glad I talked to you. Like, you know your stuff. Boom. So then when I went in for the appointment all day, yeah, I can meet with you. Let's meet, right? So the point I'm trying to make, guys, is you need to know this stuff in and out because you are going to have some clients that, that do pay attention. Some clients that own multiple properties. They have been reading the news. They have been following the articles. For the majority of the people, they don't really know exactly how it works. And even, even her, like she knows what she read, but then she doesn't know how it's playing out in the market. And that's where our experience as an agent, we're going to tell her what's happening in the market, not just what you see on the news, right? And, and you got to be able to have that, that conversation. Yeah, that you broke down both, even though we're dealing with a lot of buyers, now you can see the mindset of the seller and the listing agent. Yep, absolutely. Uh, let's clap it up, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. Good job, everybody.